Hey, this is Kathy Cooks and welcome to my kitchen. I am your host and chef, Kathy Cooks. In this series, we are going to be learning about the way I cook. I have 200 episodes of just recipes and things like that that you can go and filter through. But to really see how my brain works and the creativity, I had to do the videotaping differently and not plan because believe it or not, most of my cooking is unplanned, off the cuff, no recipes, and they turn out really good. So let's get cooking. Let's go into the kitchen and see the way Kathy cooks. Okay, this certain day, I need to go to the grocery store. I hen and it's time to cook. Now my fridge has always got food in it, but to me, it doesn't seem like it. When I open up the fridge, you're gonna think, wow, she's got a lot of food in there. But for someone who's creative, and if you wanna be able to just throw meals together, you have to have a stocked pantry and refrigerator. So on this particular day that I'm gonna open up my fridge, as I'm rummaging through, you know, I see my dog food and that's fine. Got some dog food over there, can't eat that. Well, I could, cause it's homemade. And then, you know, there's some chicken patties and baked beans in there. And I got a half eaten bad pie and going through, rummaging through my two produce drawers, looking for something that'll inspire me. And I see, some eggplants that I've had in there for probably a week, week and a half. They're little baby eggplants. And as I rummage through, I find some chicken sausage from Aldi. Love my Aldi's. This happens to be a feta and spinach. It's amazing. It's already pre-cooked. So it's super easy to throw into things to make taste good and to get some protein. As I'm looking around and trying to figure out, I remember I have a couple tomatoes that need to be used up because I'm going to get a whole nother big box at Costco. So got to use up my tomatoes. Then it's time to go over into my pantry. As I rummage around in the pantry, I find that I have um, a quarter bag of lentils and some um, barley. And I'm like, okay, well, I'll take those out and put them on the counter and maybe I'll use them. Maybe I won't, but just trying to pull some things in and find some inspiration. And as I'm getting, pulling things together, I get out some onion, my garlic. I remember what I have in the freezer. I remember I have some frozen naan. Um, you know, I'm an empty nester now, so my husband and I do not use, you know, a whole thing of naan at once, so I put it in the freezer. Naan would be great with this because I also have that harissa packet. This harissa packet I have had unopened in my pantry, my spice cabinet, for months. So it's time to get that out. I think harissa is Northern African, not Middle Eastern. I think it's Northern African. So we've got some things to work with here and we're going to start chopping. I start by sauteing an onion and crushed garlic. I'm using crushed garlic because I want tons of flavor in there. If you don't want as much flavor, slice it and chop it. Either way, that's up to you. I put my onion and specifically my garlic in a cold pan with cold oil because I do not want to burn my garlic. Once you burn your garlic, throw it out and you gotta start over. So then you turn on your pan to low and let it heat up really slow so that garlic can really infuse your oil and get it all super tasty. So remember that. Our garlic is starting to bubble a little bit now and get all flavored in there. It hasn't done a ton to the onion yet, and that's okay, the onion will cook. And now it's time to add our uh, harissa spice. When you add your spices in at this point or in a dry pan, it really helps them to bloom and get really full of flavor. So that's why I'm adding the harissa in now instead of adding it in like with my tomatoes because then it'll be stewed. Right now it's more like frying. And I think they do this more in a drier pan than mine, but it can't hurt, right? One thing I wish I would have done is I wish I would have fried my um, chicken sausage up first 
and just to get some flavor, some, you know, color for sort of visually. So it had some nice crispy bits, but that's okay. I didn't this time. I added it when I added my tomato and my eggplant. And at this point, I want this to stew. I want all the flavors to meld together. I do not want all my liquid to steam away and it be dry. I'm looking for a stew. So I'm going to cover it and let it cook for 15 minutes on medium to, well, no, low to medium. Then I'm gonna check it out and see what I need to do next. You can also put some salt and pepper in at this point. You can see that the veggies are starting to cook down. I'm getting some good juices in there. The smell is delicious. It's really starting to look good. So at this point, I am going to add my, um, it's like a quarter of a bag. That was it. That's all I used because I want this to be juicy. So I don't want um, tons of lentils. So I'm only adding that last little bit of lentils in there and uh, about two cups of water. Just add water as needed, um, you know, to get it to the consistency you want. Also, I am cooking in my all clad D5 pan, which is absolutely fantastic. I cannot get anything to burn in there. The fond that I get when I'm like browning meats and stuff is absolutely incredible. It's got five layers of aluminum and steel on the bottom. It is a amazing workhorse in the kitchen. I'm gonna put a link down below for you so that you can buy these pans. Also what I'm adding, is um, one of my key things that I love to have in my pantry, and you should too, and that is my Better Than Bullion soup stock. Now it's, as you see, it's in a jar. It is um, just cooked way down. It's organic. You can get this big one at Costco, and you can get them online too. I'll give you the link. You will love it. I'm gonna put my lid back on and let this go another 15 minutes and see if I need to add more water. So start with one cup. I actually ended up adding two cups of water to this. So that's why I used my Better Than Bullion, which two cups of water would be adding like, I want it to be broth, so two teaspoons then of my Better Than Bullion in there. And then I've got a nice chicken stock in there instead of just adding water to the lentils, which water has no flavor, right? So. Our flavors are coming together. It's gonna be great. And in 30 minutes, we are gonna have an amazing meal. And while that's all cooking and you're getting all those flavors together, it's time to work on our naan. Now your naan, hey, if you just wanna eat it like it is, you know, just thaw it out and eat it fine. If you want it over the top, then you want to put a little olive oil on each one, a little salt, a little garlic powder, you know, spread it around with something and heat that up, oh la la, and then cut it into sections. And then dishing this up, it smelled like you were getting it from a restaurant. It was so tasty. Make sure to dollop a little bit of, um, I always have uh, Greek yogurt in the fridge. That or sour cream, absolutely spectacular on top. I didn't put any parsley. You could put parsley on it. Um, probably a little cilantro would have been good. Maybe even some dill. It was absolutely spectacular. Give this a try. Something similar. You know, you don't even have to use eggplant. You could have just had, if you had a lot of extra tomatoes, just use tomatoes. If you wanted it more Italian, put some basil in there. Oh, feta would have been great on this because feta is good with the you know, the Mediterranean kind of flair, a little feta cheese would have been good. There's so many options you could have done if you didn't have the harissa, do some Italian seasoning. If you didn't have that, try a curry powder. There are many options out there for you. So don't do it the way I did it. Zucchini would have been great in here. Zucchini, oh, that would have been so tasty. Um, the world is your oyster. Whatever veg you have, could work in here. Oh, I also threw in spinach. I forgot about the spinach. You always throw spinach in just to give it that extra kick, right? Get you some good veg in there and you throw it in right at the end. Just wilt it so it's bright green when you serve it. Mine actually I threw in a little bit later because we ended up eating later so it wasn't that pretty bright green but I love it when I time it when it's just beautiful bright green and just slightly cooked. Amazing. Thank you so much for watching The Way Kathy Cooks, and I hope to see you next time.